Mrs. Wrongway was jealous and hateful towards the supervisor in her office. Oh, yes, she was suffering from hurt feelings. She had developed ulcers and high blood pressure. However, she became interested in the spiritual principle of forgiveness and goodwill. She realized that she had accumulated many resentful and grudging attitudes, and that these negative and obnoxious thoughts were festering in her subconscious mind. She tried to talk with her supervisor in an effort to straighten matters out, but the woman brushed her off. In a continuing effort to correct the situation, Mrs. Wrongway applied the principles of harmony and goodwill for ten minutes every morning and night prior to going to work. This is what she did. She affirmed as follows. I surround Mrs. X with harmony, love, peace, joy, and goodwill. Now this is not mumbo-jumbo. She knew what she was doing and why she was doing it. These thoughts or ideas sink into the subconscious. You know, there's only one subconscious mind and the other person picks it up. She said, there are harmony, peace, and understanding between us. Whenever I think of Mrs. X, I will say, God's love saturates your mind. A few weeks passed, and Mrs. Wrongway went to San Francisco for a weekend. And boarding the plane, she discovered that the only vacant seat was the one next to her supervisor. She greeted her cordially, and received a cordial and loving response. They had a harmonious and joyous time together in San Francisco. They are now attending these lectures on Sunday morning, the Wilshire E. Bell Theater. Infinite Intelligence set the stage for the solution of this difficulty in ways that Mrs. Wrongway didn't know, for the ways of your subconscious are past finding out, as the heavens are above the earth, so are its ways above your ways. Mrs. Wrongway's changed thinking had changed everything, including a perfect healing of her ulcers and high blood pressure. She was hurting herself. The other person is not responsible for the way you think, you know, or feel. You are, because you are the only thinker in your universe. And you are responsible for the way you think about your congressman, your senator, or anybody else. The other fellow is not. I recall a young woman saying to me one time, Everybody in my office dislikes me. There are several who want me fired. I said to her, why don't you resign and find another position? She said, what's the use? I've had six jobs this year so far. This young lady had a brilliant mind, was well educated, and was an outstanding legal secretary. Ninety percent of her problems was in her personality. Did you know that? That ninety percent, over ninety percent of all the problems in the factory, in the school, in business, in government, in the home, are not technical. They're Man's and woman's inability to get along with others. They're rubbing others the wrong way. Personality conflicts. Personality troubles. Over 90% of her problem was in her personality. But the tendency is to blame others, you know. I gave her a spiritual prescription and suggested that she take it regularly, morning and night, for several months. I told her to pray the following prayer for every man and woman in her office every day before she went to work. This is what she did. I sent out loving thoughts and feelings of goodwill, happiness, and joy to all those in my office. I affirm, claim, and believe that my relationship with each one of my co-workers will be harmonious, pleasant, and satisfactory. Divine love, harmony, peace, and beauty flow through my thoughts, words, and deeds, and I am constantly releasing the imprisoned splendor within me. I am happy, joyous, and free bubbling over with enthusiasm, and I rejoice in the goodness of God and the land of the living, and in the inner goodness of all people. Now this is something she reiterated, remained faithful to, and when thoughts of anger, criticism, or being hurt came to her, she would pour forth goodwill upon others. At the end of two months, she received a wonderful promotion, was put in complete charge of the entire legal office. For example, a thought comes to you, would like to wring somebody's neck. Well, what's to prevent you from saying God's peace filled your soul? Nothing in the world. Law of substitution. It takes a little practice. Anyone can do it who wants to do it. How much do you want what you want? Do you want to give up your grudges, your hurt feelings, your resentment, antagonism, and get good digestion, and normal blood pressure? You have to give up something, you know. 